139, which uh, hopefully you all have the pre-amended version. This bill has gone through some pretty extensive work since introduction. I know we have some people to provide testimony for you, and their input will um, be very valuable. What I thought I'd just do is run you through a, a kind of the Reader's Digest version of what the bill does, and if it um, makes sense to Madam Chair, I would use the pre-amended version. I think that's best. Okay, thank you. So um, this bill, just to give you the origination of this bill, this was one of those that um, I thought of back home uh, as I tried to think of educational opportunities, particularly in rural Colorado. Of course, I care, as we all do, about education um, for all, all of the students across the state. But uh, those of us who live in the rural areas recognize that um, there's some additional challenges, and we kind of touched on this at an earlier time, I think a prior bill of mine, that broadband is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, but one of the, this bill does not seek to address the broadband deficiencies, although I do want to right up front say um, that obviously has a huge impact on online learning opportunities in the rural areas. But what it does aim to do is um, struck to try and bring online education in a blended learning environment more in the consciousness um, of all of us. And, and again, you're the education committee, so it's not new material to you, but as one who has had two young people recently go through the um, high school experience, it, online is new enough, uh, it's unknown enough to, I think, students and parents that uh, this bill shines a little bit more of a light on the opportunities that currently exist for online learning for Colorado students and also tries to open it up a little bit further. So specifically, I would say in the bill on pre-amended version, um, line three, or page three, what we, while the introduced version talked about moving the um, online and blended learning emphasis over to CDE completely as opposed to having it stay with Mountain BOCES as current law provides, we, we, through a lot of stakeholder meetings, decided to work with it still at BOCES to keep that local tie, the local input, but to bring CDE into the process a little bit closer. And that's what you'll see on page three regarding consultation with the department as it relates to putting out the RFP uh, for the nonprofit provider who might be providing the online coursework. If you go on to page four, what we, and again, I'll just try to hit the themes and, and those who will testify will kind of get into greater detail if you have questions, but the themes on page four are really wanting to underscore the importance of strong coordination with school districts that's critically important. Also recognizing that professional development opportunities need to be there for teachers. We are talking about blended learning. Uh, we want there to be professional development that, to go hand in hand uh, with increased opportunities. Do want to talk about, I know see in there, uh, documenting and sharing best practices. Uh, I had attended an education conference in early December and sat through several breakouts on online learning and know that different states are at different places, so this is not trying to get us to the same place as any particular state, uh, but that there, to know that there is value in sharing best practices even within our own state for those schools that are using online and blended learning. Maybe they can help some of the smaller schools see the opportunities there. On page four, we also talked about changing <coughs> the date of, um, from August to February 15th, and this is for the provider uh, of the online services, that they would, we, we advance it to February, so there's more opportunity to prepare for a new school year. And um, a lot of this was born out of the experience of, of what Colorado already has and, and adjustments to what we already have. Again, that toward the bottom of the page is discussion of um, professional development and support for schools as they use online learning in the blending, blended 
learning environment. Page five is talking about um, sort of an expanded selection process, trying to improve transparency and accountability from what currently exists, just so that, again, that we're raising awareness of uh, opportunities and um, having as many of those who care to bid on this opportunity for them to do that. And so there's a committee process that you'll see lines one through 19 so that we get more input into maximizing the use and benefit of online coursework. And then on page six, we have at the very top of the page, one thing that has changed here is previously there was a cap of $200. And we, we do not want to lose the uh, need to look at affordable costs for high quality accredited courses. Um, so we have that language in there without trying to dial it into a specific dollar number. We also want uh, more data so we can track the progress of the students and that's what you'll see in paragraph 3.5 on page 6. And then finally on page 7, I think a highlight is the annual survey of parents, teachers, and students regarding their participation in and satisfaction with the supplemental online courses. And as a parent of, of a slightly older student, um, she's 26, but she's just been through two online courses through our local community college. I think it's critically important that as we, as students go through this experience, as they transition uh, in part to some of the online experiences, what's working, what isn't, what's really valuable in terms of education. And so I think having the teachers have some input on that, as well as students and parents will be really important in helping us identify where we still need to work on certain issues and what's working well in Colorado. With that, I would stop. Okay. <laughs>